Today, the Wii Rent Shop, we're continuing with the BMW E34 M5 engine restoration. As of right now, the cylinders have been honed out, the taper and out around is within factory specs, and the final crosshatch pattern has been applied, so the piston rings bed in nicely. We're ready to start assembling the block, but I first want to show you how I evaluated the other engine components. Besides the main and connecting rod bearings, everything else can be reused, and that's what we're going to go over in this video. On most parts, BMW gives an absolute measurement and then a variance to account for production tolerances. I measured the crankshaft main bearing journals with my micrometer, and they measured a 59.98 millimeters. You'll see that's within the exact spec to when it was manufactured. Although we're not reusing the stock pistons, I measured them anyway, and they're also within spec. By the way, checkpoint A refers to the spot on the piston skirt that's approximately six millimeters from the bottom. With the pistons disassembled, we'll move on to the connecting rods. The small end of the rod contains a bushing and I'm setting my dial bore gauge to the spec from BMW. The indicator will show us a deviation from that baseline measurement and there's just about zero variance, so it's like new. I measured the big end of the connecting rod using the same technique, but the real measurement you want to focus on here is the bearing clearance. The rod journals on the crankshaft measured to spec, and I took that measurement, set up my dial bore gauge with that as the baseline, and with the new connecting rod bearings installed, the dial bore gauge is showing the deviation. That is our factory specified oil clearance. So now we have a plan of attack for the engine block. We'll install the oversized JE pistons, we'll clean and prep all the original components, place the main bearings and rod bearings with new ones. I took the engine block outside, power washed it thoroughly to get all the residual hone oil out of everything. Then I media blasted it, rewashed it. I took care to rinse out all the passages with brake clean. After drying it off, I gave it a coat of high temperature primer and then high temperature black enamel. I ordered all new freeze out plugs from BMW and installed them by tapping them in with a socket and extension. The block is looking good and ready, so let's check out the cylinder head. The cylinder head for this car comes in two pieces. The bottom is where the valves lie, and the top part, called the intermediate piece, holds the camshafts and the bucket tappets. After setting the cylinder head up on the stand, I used my valve spring compressor to compress the valves, remove the keeper so I can remove the springs. And after that, the intake and exhaust valves pop right out. To further assess what we'll need to replace, I set up my dial indicator to measure valve tilt clearance or stem to guide clearance. Now I was taught a different method than this, but BMW recommends you line up the top of the valve stem with the top of the guide and measure the tilt. Spec for the intake valve is 25 thousandths and 31 thousandths for the exhaust. The stem should be seven millimeters across the board for all intake and exhaust valves. Next, we'll get to the camshaft journals. Each one measured exactly to spec. Next, I want to find out the oil clearances on the cam journals. I'm going to take that baseline measurement from the cams and zero my dial bore gauge to it. I'm going to torque down the cam bearing caps and the bore gauge should show me the difference, which is my oil clearance. Next is the camshaft lobe dimension N. This tells you if your camshaft lobes are worn. I lost the footage somehow of that measurement. This is just a visual on what we're talking about. You should be using a micrometer and all lobes measured to 44.09 or 44.10 millimeters, which is in spec. Last but not least, we should check the deck surface for flatness using a 15 10 thousandths feeler gauge and a machinist straight edge. I gave the cylinder head a power wash and used the same procedure to check flatness and both are in spec. What you saw in this video, guys, is a testament to the fact that if you have an engine, despite the mileage, if you take care of it, if you don't beat on it, these engine components will last. And it's possible to have 260,000 original miles with everything measuring to new. In the next couple episodes, we're going to start assembling this legendary power plant. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.